A few months after I arrived in Japan, I was walking to my English teaching job when I came across a small kitten in a cardboard box outside a convenience store. It looked up at me with its wide open eyes and tiny meows, begging me to take it home. But I left it there. For two days, I passed by with a heavy heart as the kitten's meows became smaller and smaller. I wondered why no one had picked it up, why no one had taken it home, why no one had helped. I returned home that second night, and I couldn't stop thinking about that little kitten outside in the cold, alone and weak. I'd been waiting for someone to do something about it. And that's when I realized I was someone, and it was going to have to be me. I asked my husband to go out to bring it home. He wasn't very pleased about going out so late at night, but he did, and he came home with that little black kitten. We called her Joey. 当時僕は犬と猫には全く関心がありませんでした。徳島では子犬や子猫が捨てられていることはそれほど珍しいことではなく。徳島で育った僕も捨てられている動物を何度か目にしたことがありますしかしその都度何をするわけでもなく見過ごしていましたこの時も彼女に子猫を連れて帰ってきてほしいと頼まれた時夜中の12時を回っていたし心の中ではもうほっとけばいいんじゃない誰かがどうにかするよそう思いましたしかしこの時は彼女があまりにも心配していたので、子猫のためじゃなく、彼女のために子猫を連れて帰ってくることにしました。I had always liked animals, but dedicating myself to saving them was not anything that had ever crossed my mind.We rescued our second kitten outside the entrance to our apartment complex. She was flea ridden and emaciated. Then we rescued our third, our fourth, and fifth, and pretty soon we had an apartment full of cats. I'd also started caring for the feral cats in the neighborhood and found myself feeding a troop of them every day. My teaching salary was being spent on cat food. One of the cats had a face that was battered and scarred. He reminded me of the paintings of the famous artist, so I called him Picasso. One day he disappeared. I searched and searched and couldn't find him anywhere. Then one night I heard a soft meow from under a car. I found Picasso with a broken spine. He was paralyzed and in very bad shape. We took him to a local vet who suggested we leave him under a nearby bridge to fend for himself, to let nature run its course. He also refused to euthanize him and said he would keep him at his clinic. I didn't understand what was happening and I felt helpless. When we called the next day, we found out Picasso would be moved to animal control, where he would be destroyed. That's when I found out some of the facts about animal welfare in Tokushima Prefecture. There were no humane societies, no shelters, only the government run animal control, where in that year, 2003 alone, more than 10,000 cats and dogs were suffocated by CO2 gas. Death was in a stainless steel machine. They call it the dream box. I couldn't let that happen to a cat that I felt for. So I demanded the procedure was done by injection, and I insisted on being present on the day of euthanasia. Picasso was spared the dream box, and I was able to comfort and stroke him until he passed. Minasanwa, 犬や猫に全く関心のなかった僕にとってこの時が初めての管理センターへの訪問でした腫瘍との中には
たくさんの犬や猫が収容されていましたピカソもそのうちの一匹でした収容されている動物たちの中には首輪をつけて尻尾を振って愛想よくしている犬や端っこの方で震えて固まっている犬ミャオと語りかけてくる猫やシャーと威嚇してくる猫そして下半身不随のピカソいろんな個性の動物たちが収容されていました彼らは管理センターに収容されるまでにはそれぞれいろんな経緯があったと思いますしかし収容されている彼らにただ一つ共通することがありますそれは期限までに飼い主が現らなければ合室に送られ苦しみながら殺処分されるということです。ピカソも同様でした。ピカソが合室に送られる。そう思うと、彼女同様、僕は耐えられませんでした。そしてこの時は、彼女の願いで、ピカソには安楽死という処置をお願いしました。そしてこの時、僕は初めて、安楽死というものがどういうものなのか知りました。So, Picasso's death became the birth of heart and our relationship with animal control.In 2006, myself and a group of concerned citizens joined together to do better for the animals of Tokushima.We started slow, rescuing cats, rehoming some of them, a steady build. And then came the mountain that changed the course of heart forever. We began the rescue of nearly 60 dogs that two women had tied to trees, living in filth, many of the animals emaciated and sick. When I met Husky, she was on that mountain, too weak to stand and just clinging to life. We brought her to the vet immediately. And we were told she wouldn't live through the next few days. She had such severe heartworm, she had fluid built up in her chest and abdomen. I wanted her to have even one day of happiness. So, to relieve her discomfort, the vet drained four liters of her fluid. The next day, two and a half. The next day, one. And then there was none. Husky had a weak heart and a persistent cough, and we had to limit her exercise, which she was never a fan of anyway. She grew to be the size of a cow and could have been mistaken for one if not for her furry face and piercing blue eyes. Husky, the dog we were told would die, had seven happy years with us until her heart gave out at the age of 15. We didn't give up on her, and her memory smiles on us every day. この時、動物をものとしか見ていなかった僕の考えは全く違っていました。感情があり、気持ちがある、一つの命として見ることができるようになっていました。動物の命を救うハートの活動を始めて、管理センターとの付き合いは不可欠なものでした。それなりに管理センターとは信頼関係を築き上げましたが、それでも管理センターから動物を引き出すには、センターの方針で僕たちが飼い主になる必要がありました。そして一頭いくらの費用も必要でした。助けたい命がたくさんある。そのためにはたくさんの費用が必要。そして引き出した後、その動物たちをお世話するマンパワー、活動を続けるための費用、引き出しても引き出しても、次から次へ収容される動物たち、先の見えない活動に僕は気がめいてしまい、どうしていいか分からず、途方に暮れました。We met Sunshine on a visit to animal control in 2008. She was a young dog that had arrived with a leg fracture, needing amputation. The staff had fallen in love with this affectionate sweetheart, but knew her chances of getting out alive were slim to none. 
With only 15% of animals leaving their facility through their adoption pool or return to owner, they knew, chances were, no one would want a damaged dog. To save Sunshine, a new rule was created that allowed an animal to be released to an animal rescue group. Our Sunshine, the first ever transfer dog, became the light and the beginning of a new day for nearly a thousand impounded cats and dogs after her. Sunshine is still our PR dog and was honored by the prefecture as an official pet therapy dog last year. And that's not where the work ends. When the disaster of 2011 struck Japan, Hart joined forces with other rescue groups to help animals in the area. The expansion of our shelter had to happen rapidly, and against great odds, we were able to house and care for 130 cats and dogs from Tohoku. 17 years ago, I would never have thought that finding a kitten in a box would impact the lives of so many animals in need. Sunshine, Husky, and Picasso are just a few of the over 1,600 animals that we have saved. The number of animals gassed at animal control has declined drastically. In 2015, less than 1,500 were destroyed, as opposed to the 10,000 on the day we began. Years ago, these figures seemed an impossible goal, and to know we have arrived here today propels my hopes for what we can achieve in the future. 僕たちの活動は微々たるものでまさに焼け石に水何も変えれない変わらない先の見えない活動にこの活動を続ける意味があるのか無駄なんじゃないかそう思いましたそしてある日僕は彼女にもうこの活動をやめようとそう言いましたしかしその時彼女がある話を僕にしてくれました皆さんにもぜひ聞いてもらえたらと思いますある朝一人の老人が海辺で砂浜を追いつくすぐらいたくさんの人手が打ち上げられているのを目にしましたすると若者が一人人手を開いて海へ投げ返していました老人は若者に近寄り尋ねました何をやっているんだ若者は答えましたこのまま日が昇ればここにいる人手が干からびて死んでしまうだから海へ投げ返してやってるんだ老人は言いましたこれだけたくさん人手がいるのに君一人で救うのは無理だろう時間の無駄じゃないかいしかし若者はまた一匹人手を拾い海で投げ返しこう言いました少なくともあの人手には意味があったこの話の解釈は多分人それぞれだと思いますが僕はこの話を聞いた時ジョイやピカソハスキーそしてこれまでに助けた動物たちのことを思い出しました確かに僕たちの活動は無駄じゃないあの子たちには本当に意味があったそう思うことができましたそしてこの話で僕はこの先の見えない活動を続ける勇気をもらいましたそのおかげで今日まで活動を続けることができましたそしてこれからも一つ一つ小さな命を助けるためにこの活動を続けていこうと思います Not everyone can organize, build and run an animal shelter but we can all make a difference. If everyone here today played one part, maybe donating to a rescue organization, choosing to adopt a rescued pet, volunteering at an animal shelter, or spreading the word, imagine the impact. Back in 2000, I passed by a desperate kitten. All I could think was, why hasn't someone helped? And then I realized I was someone, and you are too. And if we all work together, we can change the course of animal welfare for the better. 
The starfish story, it made a difference for that one. And that's all we ever set out to do. We can't rescue every animal that crosses our path, and there may always be animals in need, but we can bring about change, one life at a time. Thank you. Thank you.